Hey guys, welcome back. Today in the studio I have the beautiful Amy and I have created this look on her using the new Natasha Denona I Need A Nude palette. It's a glamorous look that's daytime appropriate. I have a new foundation that I want to use by Givenchy but it's too dark for Amy's skin. So I'm giving her a little spritz using the All Leave In Color Shield Glow in the shade Ivory to darken her body. This is the luminizing version, which means it has a little bit of a gold reflex to it. So when it's in the sun, it gives you a really nice kind of glitzy finish, but it's really subtle still. You can also get more of a matte finish. I've shared this product before. It's kind of touch proof, sweat proof. Beyonce uses it on her legs for more of a all even finish when she's performing on stage. And I actually used a little bit of this on my body for my wedding day. It comes in about five different shades. It's quite universal. Ivory will give you a bit more of a tan if you are of a similar color to myself or Amy. Next, I'm going in with the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Primer. This is a hydrating primer that is silicone free and I'm applying that over the entire face using a brush, but you can also pop it on with your fingers. I'm gonna use a couple of primers today. This one is hydrating, so it's going over the entire face and then just through the center, I'll use something that's a little bit more geared towards keeping down shine and oil at bay. This is a nice combination if you have normal to combination skin, if you're slightly oily through the T-zone, normal to dry skin on the outer edges. The second primer I'm going in with today is by Milk. This is the Hydro Grip Primer. Again, this is going through the center of the face, concentrating that on the T-zone, which is across the forehead, down the center of the nose, and a little bit on the center of your chin. These are the areas that the sebaceous glands sit. So if you're somebody that tends to get oily, this will help to keep your makeup in place all day long. Now, as I mentioned, I have a foundation that's new to me by Givenchy. It's been out a little while, but I've never tried it. I'm gonna use the Glow one today, but I also have the matte version. I will mix a tiny bit of the matte in with the Glow version just through the center of the face for that extra security, just where the skin tends to get a bit oily. So I would describe this as a skincare foundation hybrid. It's packed with skincare ingredients and it has over 97% natural origin ingredients. It's available in 30 different shades, which is great, and obviously it comes in cool, warm, and neutral undertones. This is also great if you have uneven skin tone because it comes with four color corrective pigments mixed within the foundation to help neutralize imperfections such as redness, sallow skin, and it also contains light reflecting micro pearls. So it's really nice at giving light to the skin. Through the center of the face, as I mentioned, I'm adding a tiny bit of the matte foundation. This is also a hybrid because it contains 82% skincare ingredients and it gives a luminous matte finish, so it's not completely matte. There's actually an additional five shades available in the matte version. I'm curious as to why there's more shades in the matte than there are in the glow, who knows? As you can see, it gives the most beautiful natural finish to the skin and these are buildable. Under Amy's eyes, I'm gonna use the new Makeup Forever HD Skin Concealer. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I've already raved about this over on my stories. This is a smoothing and blurring buildable concealer that is the pairing to the HD Skin Foundation, which you know is my ultimate favorite foundation. It's the one I wore on my wedding and I love it still even now. The finish of this is a semi-matte and it's almost like a liquid gel. It's a really lovely cooling formula. It gives you a medium coverage, but as you can see, you can really shear it down for a natural finish. It is completely and utterly undetectable on the skin, and very much like the foundation, you can really layer this and it does not get cakey. If you are somebody that has slightly crepey skin, you are going to love this concealer. Just on the very inner corner of the eyes, I want something that's a little bit more opaque. So I'm going in with the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. The reason I like this one is because it really is full coverage. The very inner corner of the eye tends to have a lot of discoloration. So something that's a little bit more full coverage that really packs a punch in the pigment is great for this area. And that's why I like to use this concealer in that area. Also, the brush I'm using here is by BK Beauty. And I absolutely love the brushes, as you know. They are 100% vegan and cruelty free and I will list and link them in the description bar for you and if you want to try them for yourself you can use my discount code, Shona10 will get you 10% off at the checkout. So I've just dusted what's left on my bristles across the rest of the eyelid just to neutralise it and now I'm going to move on to eyebrows. On a day to day basis Amy doesn't wear a lot of makeup and each time I've had it in the chair to create these tutorials I've done something different with her eyebrows. 
Today I'm going to keep them super natural. I'm going to take the Iconic London Liquid Brow Silk and I'm going to comb them upwards slightly to create a little bit more volume using her natural hairs. Once that's set in place, I'm taking a small amount of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Powder Duo in the shade Taupe and I'm ever so slightly deepening the brows to make the most of the natural shape that she's got. Feel free to check out my other tutorials featuring Amy if you want to see the different approaches that I've used to fill in her eyebrows. So I'm gonna move on to eyes, and as I said at the very beginning, I'm using the Natasha Denona I Need A Nude palette. This is a great look if you have hooded eyes or any shape eye really, because we're taking one color over most of the lid, and then we're gonna work all the other colors in at the lash line. So regardless of your eye shape, you should be able to pull this off. The shade I'm using here is Travertine, and this is going from the eyelash line up to where the eye naturally creases, and then we're going to start blowing that out up towards the eyebrow using what's left on the bristles. Always place the majority of your colour close to the root of the eyelashes first, and then use what's left on the bristles to pull it upwards and outwards. Travertine is a metallic soft amber shade, which is so beautiful, and as you can see it's not too dark. Regardless of your eye shape, don't be afraid to pull it up outwards towards the tail of the brow. This will give a lifted look to the eye. If you apply this with your finger, you'll get a much more opaque finish. As we're applying this just over a foundation or a light layer of concealer, this is the shade that we're achieving. If you want something, again, that's more opaque or looks more true to the colour in the pan, use a light coloured base, something like a paint pot that's lighter than your skin tone or a white eye pencil. Using that same brush, I'm taking the shade Delilah and I'm packing this on close to the root of the eyelashes and then I'm tapping that upwards so it doesn't go quite as high as the first shade that we've applied but we blend it up to where the eye naturally creases so that socket line and it's nice and seamless between this shade and Travertine which is the first colour that we applied. I'm taking a small crease brush and dipping that into Travertine and just dusting this with the eye open above the crease so that we don't lose that colour and you can build this up to your desired intensity. I'm now taking the shade Silhouette, which is a matte brown, and I'm using my Anastasia Beverly Hills number three brush to press this along the eyelash line, blending it in to the Delilah shade that we've already applied. And as you can see, when Amy looks straight ahead, there's no obvious lines between these shades. The blend and transition is so seamless. I do try to keep the very outer corner of the eye a little bit darker and keep it closer to the root of the eyelashes as we get towards that inner corner. So you'll see me here just building it up, layering another layer of silhouette, but again, concentrating on the outer third of the eye, making sure that that area is the most smoky, but still daytime appropriate. You can see here as Amy's looking around, it's not dark. It's such a nice daytime smoke. Along the waterline, I'm taking this Zoeva Graphic Eyes Eyeliner in the shade Mute, which is a cool toned dark taupe in a satin finish. I don't think they make it anymore. If they do, I will link it in the description bar, but if we can find an alternative, I'll link that. As you do apply more products to the eyes, sometimes you'll want to go in with a little bit more of your transitional shade, which is Travertine, and I'm just building that up on the outer edge to create balance. I'm taking that same shade underneath our lower eyelashes on a flat shader brush, this is going to be the lowest shade that we take. And then on the outer third, close to the root of the eyelashes, I'm taking that silhouette shade, which is the matte brown, on my Anastasia Beverly Hills number three brush and buffing that close to the root of the eyelashes. Then going back in with my flat shader brush with Travertine on and buffing those two shades together. I decided to take a little bit of Delilah and place that closer to the root of the eyelashes as we get towards the inner corner of the eye. So it's not quite as dark as Silhouette, but it's a little bit darker than the Travertine shade. And then once again, going back in with my flat shader brush and just buffing these shades together. So it all looks seamless. As I mentioned before, these looks are a work in progress. So I decided to go back in with a little bit more of the Silhouette shade on the very outer third of the mobile lid. And as you can see, I'm pulling the color up and out slightly, accentuating that almond shape of Amy's eyes. Remember, whenever you apply a color with one brush, go back in with the brush that has your transitional shade on to blend everything together. This is really important if you want a lovely seamless finish. Going back in with the Mute Pencil by Zoeva, I'm taking this underneath the top waterline. This is called Tight Lining. It gets rid of that fleshy tone that you can see when the eyes are open. And this for me is like 
the deal breaker when it comes to creating a smoky eye, whether it's a daytime smoke or an evening smoke, this really does frame the eye. I'm now taking this new mascara by Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is the Lash Sculpt Lengthening and Volumizing Mascara. Obviously, as I am using this on a client, I'm going to decant this onto an eyelash comb. Now, during the month of September, most of us go for an eyelash shed. I have tried this on myself. I wasn't blown away, but again, my eyelashes were not at their best. So I would like to try this again properly once my eyelashes are back to full length. But you can see it does create some drama and volume to your natural eyelashes. Amy's top set of lashes are quite straight, even with a little pinch in the eyelash curler. So I will apply a half lash to them in a little while. Moving back onto the face, I'm going to take this contour stick by So Su in the shade Cool. And I'm placing this in the hollows of the cheeks, the temple area, and a little bit just on the outer half of Amy's forehead. The foundation has been sat on the skin for a little while and we haven't powdered but I do like to spritz my brush with a little bit of a hydrating mist to help with the blending process especially when the foundation has sat for a little while. What you have to remember about foundations is a lot of them are self setting because not everybody requires powder. So once it has been sat for a little while it can make the blending not quite as seamless as if you go straight in with your contour after you've applied your foundation. I hope that makes sense. So using something like I have done today which is the Kosas Serum Spray it makes the blending that much easier. You'll notice I've used about three different brushes for this. I personally love my It Cosmetics brush which I'm using now but I couldn't find it when I first started so I've switched between brushes but this is my favourite. So now we've done the eyes and we've done the contour, I'm going back in with a little bit of the Makeup Forever HD Skin Concealer. As I mentioned earlier, it really is buildable and it never looks cakey. It's really great at being layered. So now that we've done the eyes, I've noticed I want a little bit more brightness underneath the eyes. So that's why I decided to go back in with another layer. These BK Beauty brushes blend beautifully, whether you're working with powders, liquids, creams, they are just so, so good. So now that I've blended that in, you can see how undetectable this is, even by layering. Amy's wearing a cool tone pink top today, so I decided to opt for the Daniel Sandler Watercolour Blush in Cherub because it's a pastel pink. It's a matte finish, so it doesn't contain any shimmers. And the palette that we've used is neutral to cool tone, so it does work well. Ordinarily, I would pick a blush tone that's a similar tone to the transition in the eye socket, but I also wanted to tie in Amy's outfit. So when you look at the overall finish, this does work well. I'm going to take the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Powder, which is a finishing powder, and I'm going to pop this through the centre of the face to minimise any shine. With the help of both the primers and the choices of the foundation that we've used through the centre, it's actually holding up pretty well, but this is an added security throughout the day. It's not a setting powder, it is a finishing powder, there is a difference. So if you are particularly oily, you might want to use a setting powder such as the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. Now as I want the skin to look as natural as possible, we have used a lightweight foundation. So it hasn't completely eradicated Amy's beautiful freckles. Has masked them slightly, therefore I want to bring them back. So I'm going in with a little bit of a brown eyeshadow mixed with a liquid mixing medium, which makes it waterproof. And I'm gonna tap that over the areas that I can see of Amy's most prominent freckles. What I love about this technique is it almost looks like you're not wearing foundation and that your skin has this beautiful radiance all of its own. I know some people don't like their freckles and if you want to cover them that's completely up to you but I find them beautiful and very endearing. As I mentioned I am going to pop on these very lightweight eye lure accent lashes. These sit on the outer half of your eye. They're barely visible but what they do is they do lift the look of your eyelashes ever so slightly and they're a little bit longer than Amy's natural lashes so they just give a little bit more of an accent hence the name to Amy's natural lashes. These eyelashes come on a clear band but when you're applying it to eyes that have eyeshadow on that band then becomes visible so I'm going in with a little bit of black eyeliner by Clinique and tapping over the clear band to make it invisible. Then I'm just taking a small amount of mascara on the very ends of the eyelashes so that they're more visible from a distance. Super lightweight, barely visible, but it just amps up the eyes that little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of this Charlotte Tilbury airbrush bronzer around the circumference of Amy's face. Obviously her neck and shoulders have that colour from the all even body luminizer that we applied at the very beginning. So I want to warm up the complexion a little bit more. 
I'm using a brush by Refa, another set of favorite brushes of mine. They're so, so soft. And if you've not tried them, give them a go. I'll link them in the description bar for you. I noticed that lots of you went crazy for the number 30 brush that I use for bronzing. It's the huge one that I do in a sweeping three shape on the face and it bronzes in seconds. It's such a great brush. See, look how soft and effortless everything looks on the face. It's blended like a dream. I'm going to keep the lips very natural. I'm gonna take the Subculture Lip Pencil by MAC to just enhance Amy's lip shape before going in with a lip gloss by Anastasia Beverly Hills in the shade Butterscotch. This smells incredible. It makes you want to eat it. This has a slight golden tone, which I think ties in with the warmth around the circumference of the face quite nicely. Of course, you can go for something slightly cooler to match the eyes and the cheeks. I'm just doing some final touches, taking a little bit of whisper from the I Need A Nude palette and popping this on the inner corner of the eyes. And then I'm gonna take this Fluid Sheer Liquid Highlighter by Armani Beauty in the shade number two. And I'm gonna pop this on the high points of the cheekbones. And that completes today's makeup look. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's a really subtle daytime appropriate smoky eye. These are the eyelashes up close and then Amy takes out a beautiful curly hair and this is the final result. It still looks super natural, but is a lovely way to enhance Amy's natural beauty and her gorgeous features. If you'd like to see another look using this palette, I will do it soon. I'm off on my honeymoon for the next two weeks, so I might not be as present here on YouTube until I'm back, but I will see you soon with another video. Don't forget, I will list and link all the products I've used in the description bar down below. If you've got any comments, I'd love to hear them. Please subscribe if you are new to my channel, and I will see you in a couple of days with another video. Bye, guys!